Hey guys, look what I've got, another set of Moto Z Tractionators GPS. Welcome to Scuba Travel and Adventure, my name is Thomas. Again, it's a tire time on my motorcycle and it's a Honda Africa Twin 2017. After having the Dunlops, uh, original fact OEM Dunlops, I decided to go with the Moto Z Tractionators GPS uh, and I use them for the front and back. Um, here I still have the original Dunlop tire, which I have changed after about 9,000 kilometers. As you see, there's still a little bit of thread left, like I don't know, maybe one or two millimeters at the most. Uh, but I figured they were done and I went with those uh, tractionators. Uh, the second set that I'm getting right now, it's again uh, Moto Z Tractionators GPS. That's the ones that I have currently on a bike. And uh, they served me well on those uh, new uh, GPS tractionators that I, since I installed them, I have put on them about 17 and a half thousand kilometers and they still have uh, quite a bit of tread life. I still would say probably another 2000 uh, kilometers. But since I'm going on uh, another adventure uh, in September with my buddies uh, into BC, uh, we're going off-roading a little bit. Uh, I figure it's gonna be time to change them uh, so I don't have to worry uh, about tires once I'm on my trip. Uh, I will show you a close-up uh, how much is left on those tires. They performed really well in all conditions, pretty much. We were in the rain, we drove uh, off-road, uh, gravel, a uh, little bit of dirt, twisties on the highway, excellent performance. I was never disappointed with the performance of those tires. So I decided to go again with uh, another set of uh, GPS tr uh, tractionators. Um, I might think about uh, in the future, maybe next time around when I decide to change the tires, I may go with the, try the Moto Z Adventures, see how those perform. Uh, if, if they will be as good as those, uh, we'll see, uh, time will show. I'll give it a shot next time um, changing the tires. It's my opinion, uh, what I think about those tires. Uh, there's so many different debates, uh, what tires you guys uh, want to use, and I see the posts all the time. I, I went that route and it's working. I had a buddy of mine on BMW, he did over 8,000 kilometers on them, which is uh, also really good. And uh, we're talking, uh, usually uh, when I ride the bike, I have it uh, pretty much fully loaded with the panniers and uh, and the load in the panniers so the bike is pretty much constantly loaded i always take my stuff with me because uh, when when i go even for a day day long adventures i want to have everything with me just in case anything happens and i always carry even a sp spare tube and uh, all my tools uh, Today I'm gonna try to attempt to change the tire with just the tools that I have on a bike. Um, the only thing I'll do since I am working in a garage, I will do the proper torques uh, on the axles and uh, I will balance my tire as well. Uh, since I'm in the garage, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, for me, it's a no brainer to do it. If I would be on a trail, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just uh, repair the tube and I would be off on my way. And I always also carry in my toolkit uh, the tube uh, patches. Let me show you uh, how the tires look right now. This way you have a close up idea how much wear is on them because tires are always a big debate uh, on any forum or any uh, Africa Twin uh, Facebook group. So let's get into this video and I'll show you how they look. So here, as you see, this is the front tire. There's still a little bit left of the thread. I would say uh, on this tire, particular tire in the front, I still have about, uh, again, two, three millimeters left. The tire performed really well. And of course, as always, the center strip is worn out more since I did more on-road riding. And the sides are still looking um, pretty much as good as new, uh, not much wear. I'll go into the back and I'll show you the back tire as well. This is the rear tire and if you see the thread markings are right there. And actually the rear has more than I thought. Uh, if you look close, I got solid uh, three millimeters uh, left on that tires. 
so there's quite a bit thread still left, uh, but it's time for them to go. And uh, now I will show you how, how to change the tire, uh, how to remove it and install and uh, static balance. So for this job, uh, what we're gonna need is a 19 millimeters and 20 millimeters uh, wrench or sockets, uh, whatever you have. I have both in, in my toolkit. And uh, first, uh, what I'm gonna do, I will take off that tire and uh, it's really helpful to have that center stand. If you don't have one, you'll be looking for some kind of a rock or something on a trail to get the tire changed. And uh, center stand, it's a lifesaver. Uh, I don't regret that investment. It's a really good idea to have one. So we'll go over uh, the removal of that um, rear tire. And uh, like I said, two simple tools, 27 mils and 19 mils. We're gonna loosen the rear axle and slide the tire out, so that's pretty simple. When you're removing the tire or the wheel, make sure to put all your parts on a clean surface as you don't want any grease to get into the spacers or or the the axle of the of the wheel and i always uh, clean them up uh, before reassembly and uh, re-grease uh, all the components that's necessary and i always try to put the parts in order the way they come out uh, this way i know how everything goes together so there is uh, your spacer for chain adjustment. And there's the center axle. I will leave everything the way it is right now. And you wanna roll the tire back, a little, the wheel back a little bit to remove the chain. And I rest the chain on the swing arm. And slowly take the tire, the rim. So as you see, no jacks, just the uh, bike is stand there, standing on its own. So I got the rear tire out. That was nice and simple. So I will move that wheel on the soft surface. This way you want to avoid the scratching of the routers. And yeah, removing the spacers. So you wanna remove those spacers. There's a right hand spacer. And we'll put it on the right side. And then we got the left hand spacers. So we gotta put it on the left side. Keep in mind, they're different. So don't mix them up. Remember which one goes where. What I like to do, I like to plug in the axle holes with the shop towel. So that will prevent any debris from going in there. And uh, another th thing you may want to notice uh, I'm gonna try to use a tire to rest my uh, motorcycle tire on. This way that prevents the damage to anything even more. See how that's gonna work out. Uh, last time I did it a little bit differently, but uh, let's see how it goes uh, this time. And we'll start with uh, draining the air by removing the valve core. I will loosen the nut a little bit on the uh, valve stem and then I remove the valve core. I'm not sure how well is that gonna go with breaking the bead, but uh, if you are on a trail, you can use your side stand and press it on a tire, on a tire anywhere on the edge, and that should break your bead. Uh, of course, I'm in the garage, so I do have a bead, bead breakers by Motion Pro, but I'll see how, how tight are, are that tire, is that tire. I'm gonna have to use the bead breakers.
All right, so you want to make sure you, you, you have that uh, tire sitting in a valley and work your spoon slowly. Once you have the top part about a foot, you should be able to pull that off there. So there we go, yeah, it's coming out. So what I will do now, I will clean up the sides here. As you see, there's a little bit of mess there and you can see the oxidation happening here. So what I'll do, I'll clean that up So for some of you that are not aware that uh, Moto Z tractionators, they are either 50-50, uh, they have an arrow pointing this way, or the other way it says mostly off-road. So I mount them on a 50-50 way, because uh, like I spend more time on-road than off-road, and uh, it works for me that way well, where I'm in the gravel or dirt, it works fine. If you are riding most of the time off-road, you definitely want to put it the other way around. The front tire does not have that option. In that way, this is where your sprocket is. And I'm going to line it up that way. Uh, so I know that the wheel is turning this way uh, on a bike. And first step, uh, what I will do, I will put some baby powder inside the tire. That prevents the tube from sticking. Then the next step, I will use the down this shelf, the soap, so it slides easy and I loop the bead and I will loop it on both sides. Uh, don't go too crazy on it, just a little bit. Make sure you go uh, with that soap on the inside of the bead as well. And then I'll do the other side as well. Always double, triple check on those tires, which way it goes, or any tires actually. And the best way to put it on is uh, basically uh, just uh, toss the tire on the rim and uh, it should go hopefully pretty smoothly. So yeah, the first part is uh, usually pretty easy. Now, what we wanna do is uh, install the tube back in its place. What you want to do, you want to remove all that air first and try not to twist it too much and you want to start where the, of course, where the valve is first. Make sure that the valve goes through that uh, rubber uh, strip that you have in the center uh, that protects your spokes. You want to hold it with your knees while you're working the spoons and again take small bites, no rushing. There she goes. So what I like to do next, uh, just going to put a little bit of air in the tube. I will use my 12 mil to tighten it a little bit more the valve stem. Right, and check if I have no tube sticking out anywhere. And now I'm gonna pop the bead back in place. All right, so next step, I'll put back the center core of the valve. And I run 32 PSI in the rear, 28 in the front. Then I tighten the nut. So what you want to do, you want to place the weights on the opposite side from the heavy side uh, where the uh, wheel is. So you should be able to stop the wheel anywhere when you rotate it and it shouldn't fall in either direction. Uh, and 
and mission accomplished and I have used uh, two ounces to balance that tire and now it's gonna be uh, installation process which is a reverse uh, process of disassembly except uh, the only thing that I'll do here is uh, use my torque wrench to adjust the proper torque on the axle nuts. I use the sticker weights so I like to clean the rim before I stick uh, the weights to the surface for a proper ad adhesion. And once I have the weights back on here, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'll put it on the balancer just to make sure we have it correctly set the weights that they didn't move. So now I'm just gonna clean up all the components and uh, re-grease everything. I'm using the crazy grease. Apparently it's really good Just be careful not to put any grease on the brake or the rotors and I am not going crazy with the grease just enough so so it is lubricated okay. And of course the last step would be to put the wheel where it belongs So I haven't touched the chain adjusters, so I'm just gonna make sure that it's nicely against them So I'll press on the wheel while I'm tightening it So first as I said before I go into torque wrench, I will use my tools supplied tool kit that I carry on a bike so I tie, tie it as hard as, as, as far as it goes uh, for me and then since I am at home, I will use the torque wrench to serve me for foot pounds of torque because that's what the current, the proper torque is for that uh, axle nut. I will see how far off I was. That's a 27 mils. So yeah, it will be just fine pretty much. So this is how, you st how to install the rear tire. There's nothing really to it. It's a little bit of a struggle with the with the bead. Other than that, everything is straightforward. Just make sure what part goes where. Use the proper tops at the end. If you're using the uh, tools in the garage, if you're using it in a field, just tie it up as your strength allows you. Well, don't break it. And uh, if you want to see the front tire installation, uh, I have it on my uh, in my playlist as well, and I link it above here, or I can put it on a time card on an end card. So thank you for watching, and if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. That always means a lot to me. And thank you to all my subscribers so far, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers! Thanks for watching again.